The stage, Jeddah, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The oldest and greatest obsession in sport has come to the Red Sea. It's fight and flight in the AC40 racing yachts. These are the best of the best sailors in the world out there racing in one design AC40s, identical boats. This is the second America's Cup preliminary regatta. Round one, Spain. The underdogs became the top dogs on opening day. Oh, it's a pretty aggressive move. The French are uh, pretty handy and pretty slippery in the light airs. We are pretty happy about our straight lines about the start, so we are ready to, to race, yeah. Never ever underestimate an underdog. Then, the Kiwi defenders made their move. The Emirates Team New Zealand are charging and they'll mow them down super quickly here. They are steaming into that top mark. Yeah, we're obviously really comfortable on the light air. Job done, maximum points for Emirates Team New Zealand. We're actually pretty comfortable in the breeze as well. But it was the Americans who gave a masterclass on the Mediterranean. The boats are absolutely ripping down when they, re they really are. They're just like they're on rails. I do think these events count. American Magic get the win in race number four. American Magic come home and they make a two from two. They go back to back. The boats end up similar in speed. We now know that we've got a sailing team that can beat your sailing team. And to me, that's huge. Can they go two for two? This is one last look at the AC40 competition before the big show in Barcelona, Spain next year. So get ready for three days of red hot racing on the Red Sea. Welcome to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia for the second preliminary regatta of the 37th America's Cup. This is a first for World Sailing, a professional sailing regatta of America's Cup scale hosted in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A remarkable country boasts some truly spectacular cultural scenery and host to some of the world's biggest sports. Over the next three days, we'll be talking about all things related to racing in red. The Red Sea Red Hot Competition. It is on the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta, Cheddar. And this is what it's all about. The America's Cup, a Victorian design trophy made of ornate sterling silver, first awarded in 1851. Now that's 45 years before the first modern Olympics and predates Soccer's World Cup. 174 years of history in constant competition. If you're a sailor, it's the first and last word. Win it and you've been there and done it. You're one of the few. The Cup Defenders is Emirates Team New Zealand. They wrestled the Cup off the USA in 2017 and defended it on home turf in Auckland in 2021. Out to stop them though, five top class international challenges. The biggest and the best in sailing. Mines, mechanics and muscle. But, and it's an important but, only one team can win the right to challenge the Kiwis in Spain next year. And the next few days of racing here in Jeddah equals a massive opportunity for them to know what they're all up against. We have six fully professional teams, as big as it gets in global sailing. At this stage, all teams are building their 75-foot race yachts. Thousands of man-hours of design effort, the latest in terms of concepts and technology, the fastest, most technically advanced yachts on the planet. And these are the athletes that will race them. One part pure sailor, one part technician. The cup game is now 100% embedded in leading edge technology. Numbers, details, targets, speed, high stakes, and the pressure to deliver sits on these athletes' shoulders. But that's next year. Over the next three days, all teams will race the AC40 class in eight fleet races, and the two teams who score the most points face off in a winner-takes-all match race. Scoring, quite simple. 10 points for first, seven for second, five for third, then three, two, one. And Shirley Robinson, it's worth taking a quick look at how the Americans won the first challenge. That scoring format worked for New York Yacht Club's American Magic as they went into the final day of the Villanova Regatta in fifth place. And American Magic off the line, what a start. 
So it was an outside bet that they could climb the leaderboard and challenge for a spot in the match race grand final. But achieve it, they did. The team led by Tom Slingsby and Paul Goodison put on a final day masterclass. That is uh, really clever sailing by the Americans. The scene was set for a humdinger of a final match race between the Kiwi Cup holders and American Magic. Ultimately, the weather gods didn't play ball. This is the race committee, and this race has been stopped. So the win went to the team representing the club that held the America's Cup for 132 years, who, by the way, badly want it back. That was Villanova, but now we're in Jeddah on the Red Sea, and all these teams have spent the months thinking about how do you win this next AC40 regatta. The team that won the last one, American Magic, surely, they, the way they celebrated, they were pumped. It meant a lot. I mean, they are effervescent. They're glowing with a newfound confidence. I, I spent a couple of days in Barcelona with them, and that runs throughout the team. It meant the world. And of course, they've got the sports MVP, Tom Slingsby. He is fired up for more. Yeah, I don't think they're the only team that are fired up at the moment. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, James Spithill and Francesco Bruni handing the keys of the Ferrari over to a new young look team. Going to be really interesting to see how they go. Every competition loves a dark horse. Now, you just have to go back to Villanova and you look straight away, Orient Express Racing. Yeah, look, the French team, I think, did a fantastic job in Villanova, winning the first race there. They'll be absolutely looking forward to doing the same thing here and, and setting the, the bar high for the, for the event here in Jeddah. Emirates Team New Zealand. Well, as we'd expect, this team is stacked with talent. Four athletes who've worked together and delivered on both the Olympic racetrack and in the Cup World. For Jeddah, skipper Pete Burling teams up on the starboard side with trimmer Andy Maloney. He's in charge of speed and on the port side, Ozzy Nathan Outrich drives back on the control. Bye. A poor performance from Ben Ainsley's outfit in Villanova will certainly have sharpened the focus of Britannia's Britannia here in Jeddah. Ben leads the starboard team with Ian Jensen brought in for this event to enhance the speed loop. On port, Olympic double gold medalist Giles Scott is partnered by Welsh talent. Alinghi Red Bull Racing set up camp here in Jeddah for much of the last month. Two AC40s and a plethora of coaching talent hard to push this young team. Skipper Arno Sarafagas, he drives the starboard side with Brian Matro and across the boat, Max Bachelin, keen to secure his drive for next year, is partnered with the experienced Yves Dutrin. The new young look Italian team of Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli here in Jeddah has some big boots to fill with the left side of the driving being taken on by 19 year old Marco Gradoni and trimming the sails is Umberto Molinari with the right hand side of the yacht being steered by Ruggiero Tita and aero done by Vittorio Bassaro. American Magic have set the bar high winning the first AC40 event in Villanova a couple of months ago with the experience of Paul Goodison team with Michael Menninger on the port side combining with the in-form 2023 World Sailor of the Year Tom Slingsby and trimmer Riley Gibbs on the starboard side. These guys are the team to beat. The French team of Orient Express Racing showed a clean set of heels in race one in Villanova. Can they do the same here in Jeddah? Steering on the left side of the yacht is Kevin Pepinay and sitting behind is sail trimmer Jason Saunders. On the right side of the yacht we have Ponton de la Pierre and Matteo Van Damme on aero control. Welcome to Race Central, the Jeddah Yacht Club and Marina and it's right beside the need for speed, the Jeddah Corniche of Formula One circuits so with timing speed on the water against time on the land, a perfect place. And of course, this is what it's all about. Vision 30, getting kids into sailing and the Jetta Yacht Club Academy does such a magnificent job. A thousand children already learning the basics of this wonderful sport of sailing. And last night, a magnificent opening ceremony, drone show and people are plenty. Let's go. The course today is straightforward, an upwind start, not easy to nail in today's marginal conditions. Then it's upwind to a gate, and boats can pass either side of the turning marks before driving full speed downwind to the bottom gate. Six legs are planned before a push for the finish. It's currently a little light, but a raceable building onshore breeze, and all the prediction hours is getting better and better. The 
race day one, race one of the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta on the Red Sea off the coast of Jeddah. Stephen McIver, Glenn Ashby, Shirley Robertson and Peter Lester on the water ready to bring you three races where today points count. That's the defender, Emirates Team New Zealand, as we get into pre-start. Good wind. Let's go racing. Yeah, look, it's uh, really, really light conditions just at the moment. Possibly very, very close to the wind limit. But we'll see how we go. Ian Murray and Melanie Roberts here will be keeping an eye on that. And only 1 minute 43 to go, so possibly a race away. Wind limit, of course, is 6.5 knots for an average. And that is measured on the committee boat by Ian Murray. Currently, it's 7 knots. But, of course, you know, he has to get a good average to make that happen. Let's go into the water, Peter Lester. How do you see the conditions on chase one? Oh, it looks pretty nice. Yeah, the short course to the top. The breeze looks good and building. Uh, and the good news is, go, leading out here, Ineos did have uh, a bit of a technical issue, but no, they're out here sailing around and they look comfortable. Thanks, Pete. Looking forward to that. Here's a problem already for New York's American Magic. They had troubles at the start yesterday in practice racing, so it could be a long day. We shall wait and see. Yeah, look, those guys being low riding at the moment, being off the foils, is not a good start for them. Only 55 seconds to go to the start here. All boats really trying hard to keep the boats on the foils. It'll be the teams that can stay on the foils that will ultimately get around the track in good shape. The start looks a bit wacky in these conditions. They're all above the line, just trying to stay in, in clear air where it's, where it's easier just to stay on the foils. Today could be one of those challenging days. Absolutely going to be challenging. It's going to be all about the boats that can stay on their foils today. Only 25 to se seconds to go to the start. You're going to be really interesting to see who can make it across the line in good shape. But this will challenge time on distance. These conditions, won't it? Absolutely. Really, really tricky here. Everyone will be trying to get off the line and make sure that they can keep a clean set of goggles. So all teams, barring American Magic, getting ready to start race one of this Neom America's Cup preliminary get The countdown is on. You can see the clock counting down at one second, and it looks like it is race on. This is the umpires, OCS USA restart penalty, OCS Switzerland restart penalty. Switzerland penalty clear. So as we saw just earlier for that pre-start, American Magic in trouble early in race number one. It'll be all about the boats that can actually get this first tack away. They need to be doing around about 26 knots of boat speed entering the tack to be able to pull off a foiling manoeuvre. Anything less than 26, very, very marginal to stay on the foil. It'll be interesting to see how they can pull it off. And given the conditions, a beautiful start from this boat here. They were at 20 minutes of sailing. They're a technical issue this morning. Uh, this is the umpire's penalty USA boundary, penalty USA boundary. Ineos Britannia is doing a really good job in those light conditions to rebuild the speed, exiting that tack, watching the French coming down, foil down. Can they pull off their manoeuvre as well? Really great job on board the French boat. This is the umpires, USA disqualified, uh, deliberately going way outside the boundary. That's a wow, huge call by umpire Richard Slater there. That's a big, big, big loss for early on in this regatta for American Magic there. That's, uh, that's a real shame for those guys. But the race goes on, and at the moment, looks like Emirates Team New Zealand doing a really nice job keeping their uh, boat rumbling along. I mean, it's potentially a, like a professional foul. You, the last thing you want to do is come off the foils and you want to pick your moment and you to do to tack to do that manoeuvre and they just kept going and going. A little bit of an unforced error there by American Magic. Um, let's go on board Everett's Team New Zealand, see what's going on. 16. Great, good numbers here already, so you don't have to be too aggressive, but 24 is about up. Two, one, and four. Yeah, really, really clinical <laughs> maneuver there. 
fairly good shape there, time. bearing in mind that the two Can't boats out to the right-hand right side of the course have to do I'm a manoeuvre, so they will lose quite a bit out of the manoeuvre. It's showing there only a narrow lead to Emirates Team New Zealand, but they are one mover manoeuvre ahead of the British out to the right-hand side of the course, so they will lose a little bit coming out of that manoeuvre. Don't you love the stories of sport? And you mentioned it, Shirley. In else Britannia, the last team to dock out with the mechanical, suddenly there, OK, let's go racing. There was no problem. Ben Ainsley had a, a, a stern face on him. He was so frustrated this morning. He was desperate to get out there. Uh, and sometimes that happens in sport, and you just come out firing. So currently as they head up to the top mark for the first time, it's Emirates yeah. Team New Zealand, GBR, France, right Switzerland uh, and Italian. A reminder the, that American Magic has been uh, disqualified yeah. from Here race number one in this first official race of the Neom uh, America's Cup preliminary regatta. And here's Emirates Team New Zealand with Neos Britannia bearing down at speed down behind uh, them as they take what we would see on our screen, we'll call that the right mark oh, yeah, and it will be oh, yeah. Emirates Team New Zealand around the mark, top mark wheel, for the first time and one. leading this fleet of five in the opening down, race here yeah, on down. the Red Sea down, in Jeddah. Two, one, slow build here, your wheel. Yeah, all the teams powering the rig up as they get round the top mark there, the top gate. You can see the depth in the mainsail there and in the jib as they're coming around the top there. They'll be using a huge amount of horsepower out of that 100 square metre sail package they've got up at the moment. All teams on the J1 jib running around 36 square metres on the J1 jib, so they're using the maximum amount of sail area they can on these AC40 class boats. This is Orient Express Racing, who in the three practice races that we had yesterday, touched down in each race. So if you talk about work on the Shirley, that's got to be it. And these light conditions won't be helping that. Glenn and I went to see them this morning. They've had a few technical issues, so not the run up to today that they would have hoped for, but we saw them really perform in very similar conditions back in Spain. And they'll, be, they'll feel happy in this. Have to go lower. Up, 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 not lower, would you? Up. You can hear Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli there, talking about the moding of the boat, the setting up of what they're needing to do. They will be sailing through a little bit of dirty, chopped up air there, so very important for them to execute their manoeuvres well and try and sail in clear breeze. Magnificent picture of three boats falling at speed. These AC-40s on the Red Sea just doesn't get too much better. We've been waiting for this for so long. Lovely textbook sailing from the defenders, isn't it? They're just, you know, defending Defenders are defending beautifully there and staying in the fresh breeze and just slowly extending all the time. Remember, they've sailed the boat the longest. Uh, they've sailed together a long time and it's so polished there. Let's go to Peter on chase one. What do you make of this uh, first upwind leg as they come down towards you, Peter? Uh, the first up when Emirates Team New Zealand went off on port, so uh, they, they went all the way over to that right-hand boundary and they crossed, so they've led from start to finish. But more importantly, what I've seen coming on the downward leg, leg two, when the boats were parallel together, the New Zealanders seemed to be sailing a little bit deeper, same speed, and that's why you've got that uh, distance gain. The, the delta's gone out a little bit to Emirates Team New Zealand. This is the race committee. We are moving the windward gate, shortening the course uh, to 0.7 nautical miles. So wind conditions dictating how this race will unfold. But as we are on leg two, as you can see on our, the bottom of your screen, it is Emirates Team New Zealand leading Enios Britannia, head of Orient Express Racing. And Lingi Red Bull Racing and then Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. The gap that Emirates Team New Zealand has built on Enios Britannia has grown to around 260 odd metres as they get ready to jive and approach the bottom gate for the first time. Uh, French Emirates Sea New Zealand nice and clean, smooth as sugar as they go around that bottom gate. Not necessarily that sugar is smooth. 
<laughs> well, it depends if you like your sugar or not, I guess. But, uh, they're certainly sailing the boat really cleanly there, watching Ineos Britannia come down. They'll be very pleased to get off the dock, get the sails up, and actually get the boat around the track. The shore crew done a brilliant job to get that boat on the water. Hats off. Ineos Britannia running the, the bottom mark for the first time and chasing Emirates Team New Zealand. Game on again as we hit on the upward leg for the second time. Uh, they are going to attack soon. Oh, yeah, France no, just yeah. looked like they dropped off the foils there in that jive as well. Yep. Alinghi Red Bull Racing managed to stay on the foil. Uh, uh, a little bit yeah, tough for the French. Fast, that'll uh, that'll sting yeah. a little bit for sure. They were in good shape, so uh, a real shame for the French. Let's go on board Alinghi yeah, Red yeah, Bull Racing for a moment. Four down. You can see the French, they've come off the fours. Why don't we take a look at how this happened? Yeah, just watching the French coming in here for the jive. Foil going down. Uh, struggling to get the boat hooked up there out of the jive. Looked like they actually got too high on the ride height. So that was a ride height management issue there. You watch the boat turn here. Watch the outside foil there, getting high, getting high. And then a vent. So basically a crash down there is the load transition from one foil to the other, venting the lured foil, which basically is a complete loss of lift. You lose the lift and the boat will crash down. Well, Alinghi Red Bull Racing, as they approach the bottom for the first time, uh, they are, shall we say, parked up as well. It's not exactly how they'd be wanting to get around the mark, those guys, for sure. But um, really tricky to keep the boat rumbling in these conditions. All about maintaining really accurate flow over the sails and exiting those manoeuvres cleanly. It's a very, very delicate flight control management and sail control management. Not easy conditions. Two teams in displacement mode. They come around the bottom mark. They will not be liking this. Let's go into the water. Peter Lester, has the wind dropped off that much? Yeah, it's down a, a, a maybe a knot, a knot and a half, and that's made a difference. And both teams that touch down at the bottom mark, I think, just slightly uh, misjudged the ley line, needed to sail a little bit deep, and we saw the Swiss and the French touch down. And then I look up the course. Right now, Team New Zealand are a, a little vein of pressure. There's a little bit of a pressure cell on that left-hand side. But how much have Ineos Britannia improved from what we saw in, in, in Villanova? They're going nicely in the middle of the track. Give us a nice fat lay and it'll hurt them. Just a fast BMG on this one. Yeah. Probably just that slow trend day at the moment. Make sure we're 24s for it. Had nice wind coming. Yeah, just watch it. I don't want to not lay, so go quite yeah. narrowly. Yeah, yeah, understood. Yeah. 276, so. No, it's saying about three from now, we'll go another five. He's doing a tap in that bow out. Happy here. to match that. It's fascinating yeah, eavesdropping. Uh, <laughs> isn't it? Remember, we've got um, two helmsmen, one board. on each side. On the starboard side, Pete Burling and the port of United, and you were listening to that discussion. And, of course, visibility is really restricted. You can only see on one side of the boat. So really painting the picture for each other and making sure you minimise mistakes and manoeuvres. Emirates team New Zealand, the defender of the 37th America's Cup, approaching the top gate for the second time. Quite funny that the team behind them is the official challenger of record, Ineos Britannia. I'm sure there are those British sailing fans who would love to see this in the match come October 2024. I'm sure Sabine Angel would love that as well. But around the top mark they go, Emirates Team New Zealand for the second time with a sizable lead on Ineos Britannia. The remainder of the fleet struggling somewhat, still at the bottom mark. That's probably going to be three jobs. Really big gains here for Emirates Team New Zealand sailing the boat well. Also the, the British Ineos Britannia sailing the boat really nicely. It'd be really interesting to watch them come around the mark, watching that clue getting pumped forward. The depth coming yep. into the mainsail yep. and the rig getting powered up. Huge aero change here as they go around the mark. Most importantly, as any of Britannia go around the mark, huge confidence boost. Simple as that. And confidence such a key weapon in any professional sport and at the elite level. I think already they've got the most improved prize, haven't they? And, you know, they were not happy last in Villanova just two months ago. And, and I heard the day after Villanova, they were out in the 40 practicing. This has been a priority. This has been important.
They say practice makes perfect and these guys are really sailing the boat well at the moment. They'll be hoping for a clean set of heels. Let's go on board Ineos Britannia. Nicely, yeah, good pressure actually. Okay, good speed hit. Reckon 28s, 29s. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you get on these, got a couple of boats coming around your bow, but no problem. Let's take them down a couple of jobs. Good on power, let's take it down a couple more. What heel are you looking for here? Uh, yeah, have you going 54 can here, Ben? I'll yep. take three windward. Yep. Just got these boats come around your bow now. Yeah, copy. A bit of gas here, Blitz. Yeah, yep, copy that. Keep a bit of the bank. Yep, it's a light here. Emirates Sea New Zealand approaching the bottom mark and looking as smooth as silk in this opening race. The official first race of the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta. Ray Davies is on board the chase boat for Emirates Team New Zealand. Tidy start for the lads so far, Ray. Oh, no, very pleasing. Great start. Um, they've now their timing. Uh, poor tack start. Uh, been talking a lot about that, just trying to keep the manoeuvres down to a minimum, keeping clear air, and they executed that really, really well. And um, now they've sailed this place really, this race really smoothly so far. Really good comms on board, very, very clear. So now very pleasing from a coaching perspective. Uh, Ray, it's uh, Glenn Ashby here. Just looking at the, the clue management of these mainsails, watching the British jibing here. Really, really big day for the trimmers, as well as the helmsmen, obviously, but really big day for the trimmers to keep attached flow on the sails. I'd imagine it'd be something that you guys would have worked hard on over the last couple of months. Yeah, 100%, Lenny. Um, definitely all about, um, you know, managing the power on the sails and not stalling the wing, which you're pretty good at yourself, if not doing. Um, and yeah, like managing that and the load on the board, making sure you don't put too much load into that board until it's got good flow attached. And um, yeah, no, they're doing a fantastic job. And as you know, the hours and hours that are required to go into these to, to get it a slick operation, um, it's, it's a lot of hard work. And you know, touch wood, they finished this race off, but so far they're sailing really well. But yeah, very, very tough conditions. Touching some wood here. Thanks for your time, Ray. I appreciate yeah, yeah, it. Let you get back to work as we go yeah, on board. Right. Any else, Britannia? Pressure looks okay, boundary, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think we've just got to follow the Kiwis. We're in right, he's still here, or yeah. maybe it's just consistent trend that way. Yeah, it could be the average is going slightly right. Yeah. This is dialing us left. Yeah. Okay, 20 seconds to a boundary. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, going left now, five left. Yeah, all good. Glenn, these yeah, are the look toughest look conditions on this boat. I mean, we yeah. luckily to have watched them race in all kinds of conditions oh, yeah. now, but uh, to me, this just seems the hardest to execute well. Yeah, look, it, it really is. It's a, it's, it's these conditions you're using every gear in your gearbox. You know, you're, you're really going through the gears really accurately, and it's such a finesse between the steering and the trimming. That balance of each side of the yacht working so closely together. Super, super critical to get the boats around the track yeah. cleanly. If you're tuning in, expecting to see Jimmy Spissel and Francesco Bruni, we've got a surprise for you. Two new helmsmen here, a very young talent, Roger Tita and Marco Gradoni uh, on the port side. I mean, the future of Italian sailing. And two young men not afraid to push that boat to its limits. Okay, have a deal. You will need another jibe. Yeah, no problem. Just be careful of Vino's gas. Yes. Yeah, every single team on the race course talking about gas, which is basically the dirty air that comes off the back of the sails, the sort of pre-used air, if you like. It, um, it does get very second-hand as it comes off. It's turbulent. It's got a lot of rotor in it, a lot of vortices, and it's um, nowhere near as nice to sail in dirty air as it is to sail in clean air. So that dirty air management around the course is absolutely critical on these uh, lighter air days to, to manage where that is. It's invisible, you can't see it, but you've got to know where it is and you can feel it. We are on the penultimate leg of race number one in this Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta here on the Red Sea off the coast of Jeddah. And as you can see, 
If you look at the, like the leaders, Emirates Team New Zealand there, steaming so ahead uh, around 450 metres ahead of Ineos Britannia. And they have a real chance of potentially lapping the rest of the fleet. Around they go, the top mark for the last time. Emirates Team New Zealand in this opening race. Yeah, you're catching. Yeah. Jordan is going fast out to Aldrin, it's good. Yeah, exactly, we just try and make it in two. As long as you've got good wind in front, it's all good. Doesn't look any different. Yeah. Helicopter's a bit further away this time. Leo Moss with the uh, listener. I'm all set up, there's boundary, mate, let's go. <laughs> Len Ashby, are you used to sitting there beside them? How, how strange is it to be listening from here? <laughs> It's actually really nice uh, having a watch uh, from here, I must admit. It's quite comfortable in the air-conditioned uh, booth at the moment, I must say. But, uh, no, I look very, very uh, familiar with how those guys talk and how they communicate and how they sail the boat. But um, really, really nice pictures on the race course. Ineos Britannia coming into the top here as well and uh, doing a great job. Ineos Britannia completing their penultimate leg. They will head down the downward leg for the final time in race number one here in Jeddah. I think there'll be enough wind to kind of manage it anyway. Hot mode's probably good for it as well, eh? So we get the hook up before yeah, we start. seeing those little the ribbons on the uh, back of the mainsail well, so there. That's a, uh, they're called woolies or leech probably ribbons, if you like. Back. That's an indication to the trimmers on board when you're exiting the manoeuvres that you've got attached flow over the actual sails themselves. So if the trimmers see those little woolies start disappearing behind the sail itself or in between the two skins, you're actually starting to get stalled on the actual sail itself. So really important to keep those flowing, particularly coming in out, out of the manoeuvres on these light air days. The diving seems way more stressful than the tacking. I mean, I guess you're going back into your disturbed air. <laughs> yeah, in these conditions, you're just sailing just air here. forward yeah. of coming yeah, out of your dirty air, so just keeping out we the front of it. Right and tack. Emirates Team New Zealand, yeah. sharp as a tack today in the opening I'll race of the Neom America's Cup right preliminary up. gather, and they will win race number one in style. Nice the smooth. defender so showing a clean pair there. of heels and reminding who has the America's Cup. Taking three, two, one, one down. How do you think about the fleet? I think that's high mode here to not yeah, see two in front of us too much and then I'm uh, trying to get to the boundary over where the chase is. Sounds good. Some of these guys are getting timed out, aren't they? What, how long is it? Uh, uh, 20 minutes. Uh, five from the first boat though. Yeah, so they got five minutes to get up and back. So we're in New Zealand already discussing what the rest of the fleet are going to go do there. They're already facing forward to race number two. Most importantly, though, they've picked up the 10 points. Remember, eight fleet races, 10 points for the win, seven for the second. That seven points will go to the boat you are looking at right now in Enios Britannia. Britannia, excuse me. A quick reminder, they were the last boat to dock out. Do yeah, not get confused about the French. Do not worry about the French. They were currently sitting in fifth position. So there it is. P2, you might yeah, say, copy. Ineos Britannia. Uh, so, and so they pick up the seven the points in race things, one. But I reckon if we want to scrub the windward here, we go out on the can a little and we just sail a bit flatter. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yep. Happy Ian Jensen just yeah, talking sounds, about yeah. straight away after the finish, just talking about what they can do better, how they yeah, can improve, yeah, right. and how they can get the boat around the track better. And I mean, those. Those comms are all yeah, so important, and it's such a delicate balance. So continually yeah, improving so is what it's all about in this we, game. We Never to standing still. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli about to complete their final movement around the top mark, but they've still got to come on down. You can see how costly it is coming off the foils, even just for 30 or 40 seconds, just how far the distance accumulates quickly. So 
Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli doing a nice job sailing the boat quite well. This young team on the helm haven't had a huge amount of time actually sailing these boats in these light conditions. So really, really tricky. As Shirley was saying before, almost the most difficult conditions you can possibly sail in at the moment. Yeah, it's slightly unfair. And we've seen them sailing really well with it. a couple more knots, but this is the toughest conditions. We're looking at Marco Gradoni. He is 19, 19 years old, and here he is in the America's Cup world. What a talent. Three times Optimus World Champion. Let's go on board Emirates Team New Zealand. Peter Berlinger, nice start to this regatta. Full points, mate. Yeah, it's nice to get a good one on the board there to start with. Um, felt a lot like Villanova, didn't it? With a fair few boats off the foil, but you know, we did a nice job getting off the start well, and that made our life pretty easy. Yeah, Pete, uh, Glenn Ashby here. I'm um, just having a bit of a look on board, just sort of seeing how much uh, Andy and Blair were moving the traveller around. It's obviously a huge uh, choreographed manoeuvre, every manoeuvre you do, and uh, the boy's doing a great job behind you, but obviously needs to be steered accurately as well. So, uh, yeah, ni nice job. Obviously, the boy's doing great work. Yeah, yeah, I think it takes everyone on the boat to nail their roll to 100% to, to get through a manoeuvre. You know, you can pretty easily do stuff wrong with it, all four of the inputs, so it's... Um, yeah, I think you set the spot of end. Yeah, the margin's so small that uh, one mistake and uh, costs you costs you minutes. So uh, now we're pretty happy to get through this first one unscathed, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, a couple more to come. Pete, it's Shirley here. Uh, congratulations! What a what a masterclass. I mean, we saw you take a different approach to that start. How much have you been studying how to execute those tricky starts in these marginal conditions? Uh, well, we've had a lot of practice at it, uh, surprisingly. Although it's been beautiful conditions here in the build-up. Uh, yeah, Murphy's Law, there's always no win for day one, so it's um, yeah, something that, you know, obviously go back through the notes of Villanova and they're yeah, really happy with the, the way we managed to learn from that next year. All right, thanks, Pete. Let's get ready for race two. Congratulations. So, masterclass, you might have said, and it was, it was certainly a smooth win for Emirates Team New Zealand. Luno Rosa, Prada Pirelli about to okay, approach right. the Step finish again. line and they will pick up the five points it's p3 as slowly, we say and slowly, slowly, in uh, motor okay. racing terms third on the podium bronze doesn't matter most importantly this one if you remember uh, five points is important if you go back to villanova where uh, it was in race number one new york american magic was got the five points and emirates team new zealand got the four points in race number one and it was that one point of the whole regatta that cost them okay, so right. it, it is again when it comes to the scoring margins as well Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli they have looked strong from day one of practice and they do it again this time on the opening day they get third position and five points in race number one here in Jeddah yes coming up uh, people we go close to New Zealand this is the race committee the time limit has been reached race one has been stopped Confirmation that the big red stop sign has gone up, but we do have three podium positions. New Zealand 10, Enel 7 points, and Italy 5. Let's take a look back, shall we? Yeah, coming into the start line here, only three boats really doing a nice job getting off the line here in these marginal the conditions. And they were the boats that ended up getting a good result in the finish. Penalty. OCS Switzerland. First gate, just sort of seeing Emirates Team New Zealand come around the mark here, really smooth sailing, powering up the sails nicely there and using the aero package to, to perfection. The Kiwi team just got further and further ahead and, and really showed the world. Oh, and a big crash down for the French. The team struggling to stay on the foils, paid a big price there, which was a real shame. Final leg, Emirates Team New Zealand, just sort of showing, you know, how much time and effort they have put into sailing these boats and ultimately coming down to the finish line in great shape and uh, taking race number one here in Jeddah. Nice and smooth. So weird pups around there. So the Jetty Yacht Club and Marina makes a beautiful sight as we confirm the result from race number one. And first position, getting maximum points, Emirates Team New Zealand, followed by Enios Britannia, a minute and five seconds behind, and then Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Fourth, Alinghi Red Bull Racing, and fifth, Orient Express. The Americans disqualified on the opening leg of race number one.
the biggest enemy for all America's Cup teams. has been time. It's the one commodity they can't buy, but that doesn't apply to this regatta because the AC-40 is a one design boat. These remarkable machines are capable of sailing four, five, six times faster than the wind. So what's it like? How hard is it to master these falling monohulls? The AC-40 is a massive tool. Now, AC-40, we've been over 50 knots, which is obviously a pretty regular occurrence in the big boat, but it, um, yeah, it's a little bit harder to get there in the little boat. The speed's different to any other type of boat. Normally, when you're on a boat, you feel speed through bouncing on the water. Foiling is almost the opposite. The boat feels like it's floating. Yeah, it looks like we'll get back into a little bit more, but it doesn't look to be into the 20s too much, I think. You can turn on a dime, so you have to be super quick, super reactive, and you can pull off some pretty cool manoeuvres with it. You sure it's not the easy route. So on the AC-40, there's the two helms people at the front, so that's where Nathan and Pete sit. Well, they control the steering wheel. They also have the control of all the autopilot, and then there's Andy and I controlling the sails, predominantly the, both the mainsail and the jib, so it's quite simple. These guys are already on their approach. They've got zero, Hello. we've got three. It's a massive challenge to get any of the teams that sail on the AC-40 to really think as one. And to be honest, Pete and Nathan haven't actually done much uh, racing together. So this in-house sailing is, is awesome for us. Five, two, the only way you get the lure end off them is if you hook them. It's awesome to have someone of Nate's calibre involved in the team. We've had great battles with him in the 49er and the Moth. Yeah, and he's a really good friend. OK, they've both got like about five seconds to kill, both boats. And he hammered again. And get rolled, going to have gas. If I had to learn how to drive one of these boats on my own, I'd be starting from scratch. You know, Pete's done a full campaign and I've instantly got the whole playbook. Three, two, one, four, down. We're going to have six boats on the start line in the AC-40 and things are going to be happening super quickly. We're going to have to be able to go into that first boundary and sort of be able to read Pete's mind, be able to read Nathan's mind, and be able to react on the trip. There's nowhere to hide for us sailors, let's put it that way. You go to the One Design events, and if you don't perform, it's because the sailing team haven't performed. It's not because your team collectively didn't provide you with the best boat. Yeah, never enter into any competition without wanting to win, so I know the team's right up for it. You know, we definitely take aggressive mindset into things. Yeah, we're not afraid to, to take risks, to push things uh, super hard, to try and make sure that you know, when push comes to shove, we're, we're ready to go. have turned out here on the opening day of this Neom America's Cup preliminary gather and they'll be standing on the VIP areas on the Corniche which is the waterfront here in the uh, Jetty Yacht Club and Marina. It is a magnificent facility. Uh, the whole idea of the facility too apart from uh, welcoming super yachts and everybody into an international, it's like a, a a watery airport, immigration, customs, the whole nine yards but it's also about the next generation of Saudi sailors, and that is a critical part of why we are here for this regatta in Jeddah. Inspiring the next generation of Saudi sailors to maybe be Olympians and then future America's Cup sailors.
In any sport, a coach's role can never be underestimated. They facilitate learning, offer advice, analyze performances, and identify weaknesses. In essence, they're a, a catalyst for change and growth. American Magic's head coach is Tom Burnham, and he knows how to bring out the best in a sailing team. He played a pivotal role in their winning performance in Villanova. It's finally race day here in Villanova, Spain. Sailing the 37th America's Cup is about to get underway. We've got six teams going head to head out in the bay. And with a light breeze forecast, conditions are looking challenging. I think that's pretty set in stone. If we can try and cut it a little bit, it'd be not a bad thing to get us a little bit of time. Um, Chase two should be looking at breeze while we're hoisting mainsail to make sure we have the right jib call. It's looking a lot like the J1, but I'm the head coach of the sailing team here. And so my job on the race day is just to keep things moving along, keep the, keep the group organized. Obviously it's to provide feedback and, and um, specific racing thing, information to the sailors. So just sort of keeping things moving forward and, and making sure that the day seems as normal as possible is really one of the most important jobs. Coach Tom does a, a very good job. I mean, he understands his athletes and the sailors, um, you know, because he's raced and he's done so much racing and he's been successful. He also understands what's in their head. We are go here at Villanova. Race one is underway and it's looking good out there. One race down and it's Cup Rookies Orient Express Racing taking the win. American Magic, they're down as third. It's been a challenging day on the water. Two races sailed, it's the French topping the rankings. American Magic are just one spot off the bottom. Uh, Tom, a tough old day out there, but still very much in the mix. What, what's the mood in the camp? Uh, I guess I'm the worst person after days like this. I feel like they're lost opportunities. Uh, we had a second and a fifth. Uh, we've got to try to make up some points tomorrow and uh, make that final two and get into the match race. There's just one more day of racing here in Villanova. All of these teams will want to get their campaigns off to a winning start. But there's some big names in this AC40 fleet with an awful lot of work to do. We have done enough sailing that we've got good settings. We've got good understanding of the playbook and how we go, how we sail the boat. Because if it is as light as it's supposed to be, there's so much of an emphasis on just sailing your own boat really well. And, and if others make mistakes, then we have a good opportunity. Coach Tom Burnham has this team singing here on day two. Runner up in race three, a win in race four, and it's another win in race five. Oh, yes. It's all over here in Villanova, and it's the win for American Magic after a near perfect day of racing. As a coach, it really makes me feel proud of the guys and, and happy, and, and also a bit of a sense of relief with how well they did today. And you know, it's you always hope that what we've done leading up to this event was was the right type of preparation, but you never really know until you get here and, and actually get to uh, be tested in this environment. So it's a bit of relief and a lot of satisfaction that it's all worked out. American Magic, uh, winners of uh, the opening regatta in this cycle in Villanova, Tom Burnham's going to have to do some work in race number two because his team, as you see there, were disqualified for race number one, picking up just the solitary point. A quick recap, Emirates Team New Zealand too strong for the rest of the fleet, followed closely, by the way, by Enios Britannia. So 10 points for New Zealand, seven for Enios, five for Italy, three for the Swiss, two for the French, and one for American Magic. The course is set. It'll be another six legs as we look forward to Enios Britannia. And onto the water with Peter Lesser. So let's talk about conditions again. Four teams struggle, Peter. How does it look now? It looks similar to what we had in that first race. Uh, what impressed me was the ability, certainly, of um, Emirates Team New Zealand and Ineos Britannia to, to really connect the dots as they went up towards the top mark and the coming downwind. Uh, just picking their time when they did a manoeuvre that they're in a little bit of pressure and they had good boat speed. Uh, I think that was the defining moment. And, and, and I think it was no accident that the boats that got off the line clean that, that were the three boats that actually finished within the time limit and took out the podium positions. Do you see any change in the way the other boats will approach this start? Or, get, or is, it, is it, as always, we're at the mercy of Mother Nature? 
I think the, the, you know, the keen observers would have looked at what New Zealand did going off on port and, and a clean start. Getting clean, you cannot be compromised by boats around you in the light conditions because it's the trade-off between maybe being closer to the line but having the ability to push onto the foils and, and push forward. Um, and, and I thought Burling did a superb job really getting off on port and he barreled over towards the boundary tact and they didn't put a 100% flight time for Emirates Team New Zealand and Ineos and, uh, and you know, to a lesser extent, they're a bit further back for Luna Rossa. But I think they are the key ingredients, you know, get off the line clean, connect the dots going up the course so that you're in the pressure and able to tack and jibe and, and not fall off those foils because, wow, that's the kiss of death. Thanks, Pete. Look forward to your observations on the water as we get set for race number two. Stephen McIver, Shirley Robinson, Glenn Ashby in the booth there, expecting uh, some more excitement. And uh, all right, let's uh, let's call this one. Yeah, look, coming into uh, you know about three minutes forty before the start here. So really, the game at the moment is actually for the teams to keep the boat on the foils, work out where the dirty air is. They're above the start line, Shirley, and they're trying to keep their air clear so they can keep the boat on the foils. That's really the lead up to this race, staying foiling. The tough decision though is when you you have to come back to start. I know Alinghi Red Bull Racing. We were just looking at them. They've been here in Jeddah for a month practicing this very manoeuvre but making the call when to go back is key. It really is and the idea with these boats is obviously to sail in clear air. Mother Nature provides the gift, that is the wind, that is your engine at the end of the day. You want to have clean fuel running through your engine. If you've got dirty fuel going through your engine, just about in every car, doesn't really work that well or any bike. So clear air is a clean engine. On board with Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli, who came home in third position in race number one. How will they respond in race number two? All the teams getting ready for that two minutes 30 start and the, the dance that is the start before a, a race here in Jeddah. This is the race committee. The course for race two is course six, course six. The axis is 270. Length is 0.75 nautical miles. Good luck. So we are clear to go racing in race number two here on the Red Sea in Jeddah. As we look at all the boats at the top of the start line, just figuring out which is the best way to approach this race start. We just saw on that shot the Kiwis heading over to the left-hand side. They like that port approach, don't they? You know, clean air, get to the right-hand side, minimum, minimum manoeuvres. Yeah, absolutely. Minimum manoeuvres is the key. Coming up to 145 here to the start. Really, you're wanting to keep the airflow coming onto the boat or the air coming into the engine. You're wanting to keep that clear. So they're doing a great job. Peter, just quickly, who looks better at this particular point? I think I like this group. Uh, they're right out in front of them. We're down towards the Lewis and American Magic have just passed our bow. They'll go over to Boundary. It's all about time on distance. Picking up to come back in clear air. And uh, there's the uh, move by American Magic uh, right in front of us as they, they spin around. Now, when will the New Zealanders who are just passing around the bow of American Magic, when will they come back as we come up, to, um, just coming up towards one minute to go? One minute crucial in terms of the pre-start. No lower. Okay, now you are clear to start rolling away if you can. Yeah, all boats on the foils at the moment. So in theory, if everyone pulls off this last manoeuvre as they come into the line, we should have a fairly even start. It's going to be this last 30 seconds that is really critical to make sure that you're absolutely up to maximum speed. Ideally, you'd be over target speed, so sailing a little faster than ideal, and you'll take that speed, all that stored energy, that stored speed, upwind, over the line. Nerves are starting to jangle as we approach race start in race number two of this Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta. We're inside the last 10 seconds. Will we get a clean start? Will everybody stay on their files? We're almost there at the countdown. And we are a go for race number two. This is the umpires, this is the umpires, USA OCS restart, OCS USA restart penalty. 
20 seconds to a boundary. Think fast. No one behind you guys. I just go across the bow. Yeah, yeah, nice. Don't want to get done for being too late across. Uh, hey, no longer. Go wheel. Hey, coming away. I'm going to skip the bow. This is the umpire's penalty France. Get behind Switzerland. Penalty France. Get Check. behind Switzerland. Uh, I think it's a good chance to send a envoy now to be able to get TNZ. Hey, we should be behind right. there. So just still listening to umpire now. Richard Slater there. A the couple of penalties going USA, through. USA penalty clear. A couple of the boats there, uh, USA, just getting their penalty clear. They didn't want to repeat getting disqualified like they did in the first race, so they'll be definitely playing by this the book. the umpire, France, have a penalty, Switzerland. Get 75 metres behind Switzerland. So the French team there infringing, having to get behind the Lingi Red Bull Racing. Emirates Team New Zealand really sailing clean there. They're doing a really nice job just keeping the France boat running. France is still over forward. about 20 metres. Umpire Richard Slater just calling a 20 metre dip still to go below the VMG line there of the Lingi Red Bull Racing. They'll wash that off very quickly and, be clear. and away they go. There's a lot going on, Stephen, isn't there? It's a hectic couple of minutes. But a beautiful start by the Kiwis. We have to talk about that. Uh, they have been practicing that manoeuvre. The one thing that's very clear as we look at the team's head-up winner for the first time in race number two of this regatta is that uh, Richard Slade, the umpire, is very clear. There's no comeback if you think you did it wrong because he's very clear as to what is going on. He certainly is. The umpire is doing an exceptionally good job of keeping this race fair and even all the teams buy into the fact that you know they're the best in the business and you can't argue the toss so to speak so they're absolutely doing a great job and uh, you need umpires in a lot of sports this to, is the to make it fair. Boundary penalty France, boundary penalty France. Well, let's just quickly explain what uh, a penalty is. You have to get 75 metres either below the, the line or behind the person you've infringed. Boundary penalty France, boundary penalty France. Well, most importantly, they don't look too fast. It's the umpires as usual. Let's just get France. on. Are we on a lingy? But I don't think they'll lay left. Left 273. They, don't look like they're left. they're just looking at the boundary penalty here by France as they come into the line. Basically, you can see their boat just basically going outside the boundary there. Only going out by half a length, but doesn't matter how far you go out, you're out. Yeah, but son, one team that's not out is Emirates Team New Zealand, the winner of race one. They are the first to the top marker. They'll take that left-hand side mark as we see it on the screen, and they will cruise around that. It was interesting to hear Nathan Irish say, can we go a bit faster? Can we go a bit faster, please? They were boundary, but I think there's been enough pressure we can go all the way. Alingi Red Bull Racing now coming in. Much better start to this race for them than it was in race number one after they fell off their foil. So they will be the second to round at the top mark. Yeah, look, they were actually closer to the left gate there at the top, but going decided to go straight because pulling off that tack, bear away in these conditions, very, very risky. So they've done the right thing there, just carrying on, keeping it smooth, and actually getting around the mark cleanly. So, so as we head down and win for the first time, Emirates Team New Zealand, followed by Alingi Red Bull Racing, Enios Britannia, Orient Express Racing, American Magic, and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. The little red caboose at the back. Yeah, American Magic got a little bit of work to do there ahead of them. They're, they're sailing the boat beautifully, but when you're that far behind this early in the race, it's um, it's a tough tough day from there. probably want to go. Paul Goodison just uh, talking tactics there, being on the leeward side of the boat, so he's got a good view down the course compared to what the windward side of the boat does. The windward side can't even really see what's down the course. It's all up to the leeward side of the boat to really be the eyes of what's actually happening down the track. Onto the water with Peter Lester, which is the best side of the course where you are, Peter. 
uh, wherever the pressure is, and uh, the pressure's a little bit cellular. But what's going through my mind as we look at the boats heading down towards the, uh, the bottom mark for the first time is... Um, how much harder it is to sail downwind than upwind to actually do the jibing manoeuvre and come out of the jibe and make sure you've got foil stability. And if you fall off the foils, of course, that is super expensive. But it's still light and puffy. Um, down towards the bottom of the uh, course at the moment, as we look at Ineos and uh, Orient Express Racing, um, there looks to be good pressure for the fleet in the bottom of the course, so I, uh, I expect to see good manoeuvres heading into this bottom mark gate. is not on lay for left turn. Yeah, let's, let's go on board the chase boat of Illingi Red Bull Racing, Pietro Sabello. Uh, strong to start by your team this race. Yeah, the guys so far are doing uh, really well. You know, managing this condition is never never easy. Uh, there is always a, a trap around the course. Um, yeah, Team New Zealand for sure is really strong, we know, in this. And uh, we are just chasing. So let's see how it's it, it, uh, it gone. Appreciate the time, mate. Emirates Team New Zealand around the bottom mark for the first time, leading the fleet again. Everybody else, the chaser. Couple of high-pressure manoeuvres here. Ineos Britannia deciding whether they'll go straight or jive in front of Alinghi here. Looking like they're deciding to carry on straight there, which is probably the right call. Just charging the batteries as they speed up to take the left turn there, Alinghi the right turn. So almost in sync, both Enios Britannia and Alinghi Red Bull Racing on opposite tacks go around the bottom marks for the first time. But this is starting to tighten up somewhat. New York American Magic, Orient Express Racing. And Luna Rosso Prada Pirelli holding up the back end of the fleet. Great if we tack here, we're going to get the bad air of all these guys. But... Yeah, great. <laughs> we heard the voice of to Tom Slingsby here. Hey, hey stand by. Board down here in three, two, one. Board down. Board up. Stephen, it's so much harder than when you're match racing. When you're match racing, there's one other boat on the course. There's loads of time to make a decision, but here is all going on. And, and actually, you're compromised a lot of the time. Conversation's always handy when you listen to Emirates Team New Zealand. This is a big lefty, so if you want to sell high mode, all good, but up to you. You're turning them behind, right? Yeah, exactly. It's starting to lift again now. 23 is a good mate. Numbers should come. Oh, Prada's going down. Yeah, talking to Nathan Outridge this morning, really, you know, it's about sailing the boat cleanly and just hurting the boats behind you if you can. You know, you're really wanting to sail as best VMG as you possibly can. Sailing your boat at the best possible numbers you can and simply hurting the boats behind with your dirty air when you get that opportunity. They have really tidied up the performance from the last time we saw them in Spain. I mean, there is zero mistakes. It's so impressive. Going back quite slowly now. Yeah, look, I think the, uh, that's where, you know, as we saw with Tom Burnham before and American Magic, you know, Ray Davies with Emirates Team New Zealand, that's really why they get paid what they get paid is because they do such a brilliant job focusing on the important things, keeping the wheels on the bus, and that's such an important thing to make sure that the sailing team is thinking about the right things as they go forward. And, and, and the hard thing for us that, uh, you know, don't do what these men and women are doing both on and offshore, is this is a, a plan that is years in the making and the grind continues and that to know that the actual final uh, preliminary regatta will be in the 75s which we're all excited about the grind must be mentally and I said this used in race our practice day training yeah look it is, it is draining and, and that's really where the, the coaches and the support staff do such a brilliant job because you can't focus on every aspect of the campaign being a sailing team member you really need help in lots of different areas and it's the collective strength of the group that makes a strong team and that's really where Emirates Team New Zealand I think in the past few years has, has been extremely strong. I'm surprised you didn't throw in process. I know you love process. It's my, my least favourite word in the world, process, as we see Emirates Team New Zealand heading towards the top gate on leg number three of six in a race two of this Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta. 
good pressure for this next And it's not like they sold the Ferrari. They are driving the Ferrari right now, and they know how to put this one through its paces. And Emirates Team New Zealand leading the fleet in race two and rounding the top mark in race number two. On the power, but I'm sure they're going to go all the way. Might be worth jumping them if they. Yeah, we'll take them nice on one. now. Your call, mate. I reckon we go here, yeah, no? mate. Uh, setting up. Two, one, and four. The one thing that is, uh, is quite apparent when you look at where the rest of the fleet are, they seem to have uh, really pulled a gap on them. Yeah. Yeah, being able to sail the boat in clean air is such a critical thing in these lighter air races. You know, the, the vortex sailing with deep, powerful sails really chops up the air a lot, and that vortex blows down the course for a very big distance. So getting away from that bad air is, again, really, really fueling your engine with clean air. Alingi Red Bull uh, Racing coming into the top mark to complete leg number three and sitting right behind them at pace two is American Magic and they will want a better race. They will want points because points matter. Alingi Red Bull Racing around that left hand mark as you see it on your screen followed closely by American Magic. And then just quietly, don't take your eyes off Ineos Britannia. Nice sitting there seat, in though. position four. 57. Fifth is Luno uh, Rosa, excuse me, Orient Express Racing, and then followed by Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli. The standout on that beat for me was really the Americans. I think they've really you know, cut their way back into the fleet again, and they're sailing the boat well, keeping things simple, keeping their nose clear, but they've definitely chewed their way back towards the front of the fleet, which is uh, pretty impressive to watch. Luno Rosa, Prada Pirelli at the tail end of the fleet. Getting up, getting up to that uh, top mark now, and around they go and hit on that uh, downwind beat. Oh, and a bad jibe by American Magic there, coming off their foils in that jibe. After just saying they were doing so well, what a shame for American Magic there. Let's just hear the reaction from the crew. Shitting on. And a protest here from Alingi Red Bull Racing on Ineos Britannia, waiting for umpire Richard Slater to make a call. Emirates Team New Zealand, meanwhile, everything going on at the back are just quietly sailing away at the moment as they go around the bottom mark, head up onto the upwind leg and just looking around and doing their thing, you might say. We have to put it slightly in context. The Emirates Team New Zealand designed this boat. They work with the designers. They've had longest in it. But, you know, they are, they are showing as you say, the heels to the rest of the fleet, but they're also showing the rest of the fleet how to nail it, how to do it. And each boat gets the logs from all the other boats, and obviously they, they get our footage. So there'll be loads of analysis going on tonight. Everybody will be watching that. Whatever happened to the skullduggerians' secrecy of the America's Cup? <laughs> Well, you can't hide these days, and without a doubt, you know, the coaches and the sailors themselves will be definitely reviewing all the footage and the audio and the settings of all the other teams to make sure they're on the, on the best program moving forwards. And Lingy Red Bull Racing and Enios Britannia both approaching the bottom mark, and it will be a Lingy Red Bull Racing that will confirm themselves at this point in the second position, followed by Enios Britannia around the mark they go as well. Ben uh, Ainsley has the goggles up. Now, didn't we say yesterday that was a good sign? Hey. <laughs> I think it is a good sign with the goggles up. You know, he's in a really frustrating morning. Uh, and this is a great performance. He's going to have to be careful, though, at these speeds, going up wind, even doing 24 knots in about seven or eight knots of breeze. He doesn't get a bug in the eye because that uh, ne never goes well. So, <laughs> believe me, uh, no good, the bug in the eye. Mind you, it'd be worse for you the bug in the teeth coming back home and smiling at everybody. Yeah, bug in the grill's not a good not a good look either, to be honest. But they're sailing the boat really well, so just watching the bottom, bottom marks here. Bottom mark now, and it will be Enios, excuse me, Orient Express Racing. And Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli, 
getting around that bottom mark and goodness me I, I can't help but think uh, the sailing gods are not on the side of American magic today yeah they're really really uh, unfortunate situation in that jibe and we just said that you know this morning that really staying on the foils it's all about that and certainly the boats that have done that well have, uh, have extended Emirates Team New Zealand here, a great shot of the foil arm going through the water there. That foil arm almost acting like a big suspension lever with that horizontal going through the water. That one horizontal taking the full weight of the boat, that 2.2 tonnes of boat weight and crew weight all on a really small foil area. Does it still amaze you that we are sitting here and watching foiling monohulls? I know we've seen this before, but I, I'm still fascinated by the physics of it, even though I probably don't understand half of it. Yeah, look, the physics of these boats is, is pretty special. Um, you know, as the boat leans over, puts its weight on those foils, the writing moment increases, so you, you've got power, you can use the power then that the rig produces, and the boat's being so efficient aerodynamically and hydrodynamically means that the boat will actually start shooting forward. So once you can lift the hull out of the water, all the load goes on the leeward foil, balancing on the rudder T-foil, and away you go, extremely efficient. That's why I call you the professor. It's as simple as that, and it's, it's as nice simple as a running the top mark for the last time, and that is Emirates Team New Zealand. And they'll around that mark and, and look down and see the rest of the fleet. Yeah, they've certainly uh, got a really nice lead here. They'll be just looking downwind, just looking for the best pressure, sailing the boat smoothly, and just making sure they can deliver it basically down to the finish line from here. Let's go into the water. Peter Lester. What's going on with the rest of the fleet from your from your viewpoint? Uh, they're quite far down winds, I think. Well, I think uh, the, essentially the fleet have seen Team New Zealand sail, sail over the horizon, but there's quite a good battle going on, um, and it's quite close between Ineos Britannia and uh, Orient Express Racing. Um, look. The, one of the big moments for me was on that second one we beat with the New Zealanders. They came right across to the right, uh, the left-hand side looking up, and they nearly touched down, but they had the ability on that upwind leg to just maintain their composure and through really good uh, crew awareness of trimming, keep the boat on the foils, it went a little bit wobbly for a while, and then jump back up. The second key point uh, was was uh, off the start, another port, another port hand start. But the rest of the field will learn a lot. I mean, they will analyse this, this, these two races today very, very carefully and have a look at what the New Zealanders have been doing. And, and I'm sure they will come back and uh, there will be improvements. But, yeah, masterclass so far by the Kiwis. Hard not to look at this battle between Alingi Red Bull Racing and Ineos Britannia as they head up to the top mark to round it for the last time and head on that downward leg to head towards the finish line. This one, I still think there's something in this one. It's not over yet, that's for sure. I mean, such a, a, a mature performance from Alingi here. They've been here for a month. They've really thrown everything at this event. And, uh, yeah, they're really finding their feet. Just watching Ineos Britannia there. Really nice smooth mark rounding there. They'll be trying to hunt down Alingi Red Bull Racing. They've taken the other mark there. Interesting to see if there's any more pressure out that side of the course. Emirates Team New Zealand not far away from the finish line, coming down when there's still a little bit of a way to go, but um, sailing the boat really cleanly coming down there. They'll be just wanting to make sure their last manoeuvre or two are uh, good ones. This could be a cracking start to the regatta for Emirates Team New Zealand. They did win two races in a row at De Villanova, but they didn't start as strongly as this. But they are going to start with guns a-blazing because Emirates Team New Zealand are going to go two from two on day one and get maximum points. That's 20 points from two races. They've put their stake in the sand. And there's plenty of it around here. Trust me, that... And they will get a win in race number two here in Jeddah. You know, Shirley, when you look at that win by Emirates Team New Zealand and you look at where the rest of the field are going and Lingy Red Bull Racing doing such a strong job to potentially, and let's just say potentially because they're not at the finish yet, uh, take that second position. Uh, 
the other teams are just shaking their heads. I mean, it, 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 I mean, I'll come back to the one word you have used uh, before. That was just another master class in sailing, the AC40. Well, they're quick, it's perfect execution, and they thought about how to attack these small race courses with boundaries in these marginal conditions. So have Alinghi. Uh, this is an impressive race yeah, that's a, by them. A beautiful job, Shirley and Stephen, there from the Alinghi Red Bull Racing Team. Fantastic shots there of the boat moving around the course. The roll control, if you like, of the yacht being controlled by the aero trimmers, the sail trimmers sitting behind the helmsman. Uh, they've done a great job and they've actually extended away from Ineos Britannia on this final downwing leg. Alinghi Red Bull Racing will take second position in race number two and a valuable, valuable seven points. Remember, ten for first, seven for second and five for third. So they should be patting each other back and saying, nice job, lads, nice job. Here comes Enios Britannia. Remember, they picked up seven points for the first race by finishing second. They'll pick up five points this time. So, solid start. And I'll, we go right back to the race one. The last team to dock out. They had a mechanical. Everybody else was being towed out. They were sitting at the dock going, are we going to race today? Oh, yes, they are racing today, Enios Britannia. You're yeah, seeing Ineos Britannia there on the dock, you know, a good half hour after all the other boats docking out, there would have been some fever going on there <laughs> behind the scenes. But um, looking at Lynn Rosso, Prada Pirelli coming down here and the French, uh, you know, those guys are uh, bringing up the rear a little bit, but have, have had a solid race as well. But that is a strong performance and a good comeback for Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli when you think uh, mid-race they were they were sort of down the back of the field. So they'll pick up valuable points as do the French. And they'll pick up the two points and American Magic. Man, that's two from two at the back of the fleet. Yeah, tough day so far for American Magic, but we know the depth of talent that they have on board. Let's go on board, Emirates Team New Zealand. Time to have a, a yarn with Nader and Outerich again. Nice performance, pal. Is the crew happy with that? Yeah, thanks, Stephen. That was, that was another good one. It's obviously very tricky out here, but um, yeah, two from two so far, so very happy and obviously very focused on the next race coming up. Nath, it's uh, Glenn here. Um, obviously, getting off the start line makes life a whole lot easier, and you guys certainly have done a great job uh, getting off the line. Have, have you done much practice on the simulator, Nath, on, on this sort of start procedure and these wind conditions? Yeah, obviously, wasn't very happy with uh, our first start yesterday in practice racing. So, yeah, a lot of homework overnight, a lot of time spent uh, this morning just talking about how to develop a good strategy for these light winds. And, you know, Villain over caught us out a few times too, being off the foil at the gun. So, it looks like what we're doing is working, but um, yeah, still obviously focused on the next one too. No, well done, well done, mate. Uh, have, have a little breather. Make sure you, you drink plenty of liquids because it's, uh, it's a pretty warm day and uh, hopefully we get to see some, uh, some more fantastic racing. But uh, well done to you and the team. Cool, thanks, guys. So Emirates Team New Zealand, uh, they make it a perfect start to this second preliminary regatta here on the Red Sea. This is how it all unfolded. Yeah, just looking at the start line here, Emirates Team New Zealand with real pace on down there, just sneaking across the line there in front of the start of attack yachts. Really clean start there from Emirates Team New Zealand and it worked out well for them in the end. Gate one here, um, Emirates Team New Zealand extending a little bit there, but there was a real battle going on behind, just a little bit behind there, some, some great racing. Gate three, Alinghi Red Bull Racing coming around the mark there, followed by American Magic, who just after that had a bit of a touchdown, which is a real shame for them. Hello, hello. And this was that touchdown on board American Magic. That was really painful for those guys, unfortunately. And coming down to the finish with a fairly healthy lead, touching 29, 30 knots of boat speed, was Emirates Team New Zealand, who in the end had a very, very solid, comfortable lead. So for two races in a row, Emirates Team New Zealand have mastered the conditions. And there is their win. It was a very strong win ahead of Alinghi Red Bull Racing and Enios Britannia. And they'll be going into race number three. I wonder if they have in their head, can we make it three from three? Are they that competitive? Uh, I think every single person out on those boats <laughs> is absolutely competitive. 
So this is the race summary, looking at the average speed of all the yachts. And I'm just intrigued, Shirley, only 12 manoeuvres by Emirates Team New Zealand. I mean, that was their whole strategy, wasn't it? Start on port, less manoeuvres, and also when you get ahead, you are, you know, you're tacking less, you're picking your moments so that you absolutely nail the ley lines safely. And what a beautiful race they had. So at the moment on the Red Sea with one race to come, Emirates Team New Zealand rule the waves. Orient Express Racing are the great unknowns. We've seen plenty of action from them over the first few days. The French are playing a huge game of catch-up. They took delivery of their AC40 in mid-August. They've been trying to get up to speed with this falling monohull. Yeah, they lack time on the boat, but just don't write them off. This team is brimming with talent and experience. Anything can happen. Starting the AC40 so late is probably uh, yeah, a big challenge. But we are not putting too much pressure on us. Um, the goal will be to keep on learning. We decide to think differently. We start with a sailing team two years ago. Before those big, big team were sailing, we started a sailing team. And we had the idea to go to the America's Cup. The choice of the sailing team was also a bold decision to start with a new squad of people, young people. And when we made the decision about 18 months ago to have uh, Quentin as a skipper, I think that was the first move. To be honest, it worked beyond expectation. We chose him because he's young, he had pretty good results. He's got a very good charisma. He's a good leader. He's a natural leader. He knows every strength of uh, his teammates. I try to keep the essentials. Keep it simple every time, every day. As a sailor on water, he has a really good skills. You know how to be fast, you know, on the water. Kevin Peponet, he is really talented, really strong sailor. We are pretty linked together, pretty much same vision and, and able to put our ego on the side. This combination is, is amazing. They chose each other and they decided to have no fear to take this challenge up. So when you see your first boat as a team which started from scratch sailing with the new colors of the sponsors of Orient Express, uh, you're proud. The AC40 looks, uh, looks pretty, yeah, he's beautiful. When you see uh, inside, it's quite complicated, but to handle it, it looks simple. The feeling on the boat is incredible. The speed on it is, is quite mind-blowing, really, for such a small boat. And for us to get those, those first tries under our belt is, uh, has been amazing and our learning curve is just through the roof here. For me, the SC40 is a, a true success. The competition on, the, on those boats will be tight and tough. The AC40 fleet's probably the most talented group of sailors that we have in, in sailing in, in the planet. And so that's an enormous challenge for us, but it's also pretty exciting and it's just, it just motivates us more than anything. Inside the racing area, a boat is a boat. And it doesn't matter if it's Ben Hensley, Jimmy, Peter Berling or, or someone else. We already uh, raced against uh, these big names uh, in other leagues. We know them pretty well and we already beat them. We have a squad which has a lot to prove and we think we can move mountains, push to the limit and do something very difficult to achieve. It is the opening day of racing, the official first day of racing in the Neoma America's Cup preliminary regatta. And the fans have turned out to enjoy their hospitality here on the Corniche as we look at Al Balad, the old city, which is a little bit further down the coast. And many of our friends have been there and have been fascinated by the history that is involved here as we talk about a modern city that is 
talking about its history is, or shall I say its future, uh, being tourism, which is really quite exciting. They're talking about building another port down opposite, off the coast of Al Baladin for cruise ships. But we're here because it's all about the sailing and the America's Cup and growing Saudi sailing and the uh, Jeddah Yacht Club Academy does a fantastic job and we've seen uh, children out on the yachts uh, all week and they're really focused on this vision 2030 about creating a, a healthier environment, a, a healthier population but more importantly creating uh, America's Cup sailors surely. I mean, they're really building also a marine industry here. There's marinas being built up and down the coast, and I'm sure in the future there'll be, there'll be a lot of sailing going on in Saudi Arabia. We as a crew, and I know all the sail teams as well, have been welcomed with open arms. The locals have been incredibly friendly. And I, I have to say, when you look at that Jetty Yacht Club and Marina, it is a just it's an impressive structure. I did confirm uh, with Tofi, the harbour master, that it was designed off, off a sail of an old dhow, which used to be the trading and fishing boats historically here on the, the Red Sea. And they've done a magnificent job tell you what though that water does look tempting and when it's sitting at around 28 degrees you just want to dive in and just chill and take a chill pill <laughs> the color of the water here is quite extraordinary it's like there's a dye in it Stephen it is so blue and so clear and I know some of the teams have actually been diving and it's been uh, it's beautiful underwater still trying to spot my first turtle still trying to see my first turtle because I know there are plenty of them about So five minutes to start as we see Orient Express Racing getting the toe up. They were pretty stoked actually about a couple of days ago because the President Emmanuel Macron uh, gave his official support for the Orient Express Racing team. And that has given them a huge confidence boost knowing they basically underlined quotation marks have the nation behind them let's go into the water with uh, peter lesser as always peter you know we've it's been one of those marginal days but we've had plenty of racing what is the weather doing now uh, it's pretty similar to uh, what we've had in race one and two but what's interesting to me right now as we get um, you know into sequence is boats are being towed up on the foils uh, to make sure they can there can get there emirates team new zealand and luna rossa prada pirelli uh, no, actually, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli are also being towed up, but the Kiwis didn't. They actually sailed their boats up onto the foils, so obviously they're confident in this amount of wind, which would be in that seven and a half to eight knots. They're confident that they can pop up on the foils. It doesn't look like anyone else in the fleet is confident enough to um, to do that in this light condition. Conditions are beaut. They've shortened the uh, upwind leg down a little bit, 0.75 of a nautical mile, uh, just to make sure they're inside that time limit. But yes, yeah, similar conditions. Uh, and uh, again, this one will come down to the start. Will the Kiwis go for another port hand start? Just quickly, Pete, as we take a look at Emirates Team Museum, we're sitting on board them. I just want to ask your impression of uh, a Lingy Red Bull Racing, just briefly. Yeah, I was impressed, and uh, I, I think that their result in that race two was reflected how much time they've put in. Out, out of all the teams here, that they've got the best local knowledge, and uh, I, I thought that was impressive. Along with Ineos uh, Britannia, given where they were at the end of Villanova, um, the, the most improved team by a country mile. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. A little over three minutes to go to start. We'll get our race call at the two-minute 30 mark. So. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen here? I think the one team that we have to keep an eye on and think about is American Magic. Yeah, look, they'll be they'll be wanting to fire themselves out of the blocks uh, in this race. They'll be really wanting to have a good one here. Um, three bad ones today won't won't sit too well. So they'll be they'll be really looking forward to get off work, getting off well. It's, they need a good one, Glenn. They definitely Any hope, do. They need one. Well. They definitely do, Shirley. So it'll be really interesting. We said, we said two to two. This is the race committee. The course for race three is course six. Course six. Axis is 285. Length is 0.75 nautical miles. Good luck. So one race to go on the opening day of the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta here on the Red Sea in Saudi Arabia. If you're just joining us, wherever you're watching around the world, Emirates Team New Zealand have been perfect. They've won both races. That te team you're with won the last regatta in Villanova. That was New York's American Magic team. 
right now they're sitting on two points, which means dead last both times. I know it sounds harsh, but it's sport. Look, it, it is sport, and uh, you know those guys have certainly uh, you know come from adverse positions before. We saw that in the last event in Villanova, coming from behind to come through and win the actual event. So uh, they're very, very experienced. Uh, race control, to, race control. Well. Can you please get the white catamaran that's motoring down the starboard end? Uh, away, please. One minute, 25 seconds coming up here. All the teams will be really looking to execute these last manoeuvres well again. Roughly around about sort of seven and a half to eight knots of wind speed. The time on distance here, really critical to make sure that you get to the line in really, really good shape. They'll all have a feedback from their coaches in Race between control, the races. please get the white cat out of the way now. Ben Ainsley not happy with a boat on the course. We can see it on the right-hand side. But I, I expect a tighter start here. Yeah, a tighter start for sure. I think that white catamaran is actually race director Ian Murray, so uh, I think Ben will have to be careful what he, what he says there to race director Ian Murray. He might get a get a, uh, a toweling down, but but um, Orange Express Racing just getting their foils sorted out to do some manoeuvres here, either slowing down or speeding up. They're possibly a little early for the pin-in, only 35 seconds to go with a couple of boats off their foils, so going to be really interesting to see who can get themselves up and going. American Magic, unfortunately, off the foils again. They'll be so disappointed with that. Coming up to 20 seconds to go. That's three from three if they are off the foils for American Magic. And we're inside now, 15 seconds to the start of race number three. Who's going to hammer the start and get it right? I'm going to shake as close as I can. Clock is counting. Orange Express Racing. GBR restart penalty. GBR clear. USA restart penalty. Swiss restart penalty. So three teams with restart penalties. Britannia, American Magic, Alinghi Red Bull Racing. Winning that start, the young Marco Gridoni from Luna Rossa. They watch the Kiwis and they learn. They certainly are quick learners, the young Italian team. Beautiful execution getting off the start line there, forcing Emirates Team New Zealand to tack away for clear air. The Luna Rossa Prada Prally team, they will have the foot absolutely flat to the floor, booting it as fast as they can to the right-hand side of the course, making sure they're slightly over target speed to execute that first tack and come back across in a commanding lead. This is Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli sitting in the number one position on the first upwind leg. Be nice to have a listen and just see what's going through their minds. Early days. Three, ten, two, one, four down. And board coming up. Last mode for the gonna be different the bridge eventually, so it's a little bit. Yeah, just a tiny little dip there for Emirates Team New Zealand behind the French. Not really much of a loss there at all. Pete just uh, talking there to the rest of the crew, saying they're hopefully only able to do one manoeuvre to get up to the top mark, so that'll uh, suit them if they can lay. So crucial for the Italian boat to pick that tack back, pick that lane back, so they're absolutely at full speed into the turning mark. Absolutely a high-pressure manoeuvre here for the French on the left-hand boundary, making sure they execute this well, picking their exit angle correctly and getting the boat built back to speed as quickly as they possibly can. Let's go on board Italy. going down and turning. Two, one, board up. Board the right a bit. Hi Bill. Hi Bill. You want some ride? Marco Gridoni helming on the side, 19 years old. Uh, I have to tell you, he came to the mix zone in his helmet. He was the first sailor with his helmet on this morning. He is loving this. 
Not Big that moment for this. The umpires, USA, you have not started in three minutes. Your score did not start. Out. Two, one. We'll get back to that, but big moment right now for this new helming crew of Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. They lead the fleet around in the top mark for the first time. They will be followed around by Emirates Team New Zealand. They'd like to go three from three. This could be a tasty little race. The new chips on the block against the guys that know what they're really doing with the AC40. Emirates Team New Zealand won't be wanting to uh, let those guys disappear. Um, as much as we're enjoying watching Luna Rosso, Prada, Pirelli and the team there you know, get around the top mark first, they're going to have their work cut out for them. The rest of the fleet is breathing down their neck. They will not be wanting to see anyone in their review mirrors getting any bigger. They'll be wanting to see them getting smaller on the The helicopter is really painful. This is a Liggy Red Bull race and currently sitting in fifth position. As you can see, there is no sixth boat being considered. And for the second race out of three, American Magic. Won't be counted in the points, so to speak. It's beyond a bad day. Uh, what a terrible day. Remember, they won in Villanova. They came in here as champions. Let's go on to the chase boat of Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, because I can imagine their coach, Philippe Presley, has a rather large smile on his face at this time, Philippe. <laughs> so far, so good. That start must have been very satisfying, Philippe. And the start was uh, was okay, but uh, it's a long race. Huh? Last race we did, we did a very bad start and we catch up. So you know, let's focus all the way. Yeah, Philippe Glenn here. So important these maneuvers in the light air. And just as the team are jibing the boat there, Emirates Team New Zealand charging down the far side of the course. Uh, the young guys doing a great job, but have a bit of work to do. Uh, they're they're doing awesome. Honestly, uh, we're all. Uh, all uh, very happy of the also the, the 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 mood on board and also the communication. I don't know if you can hear uh, what's happening on board. Uh, you know, all the decisions are well thought. Sometimes there's mistakes, but at least uh, we're really happy of the the process and the way they sell. No. Thanks, thanks for your time, Philippe. One more round up. Be gentle on the round up. Yes, mate. Slaughter. I like down, cut out. Stand by. Three, two, one, slowly coming up. Speed of gas here, of the yes. boats. There we go, Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli. A nudge Point ahead nine. of Emirates Team New Zealand around the bottom mark. It was interesting to hear them say, just be gentle on the rounding. Just be gentle. And they certainly were, and they still lead slightly from Emirates Team New Zealand. You know their coach, Philippe Press, is very happy, particularly when he said the instructions that were giving each other. Yeah, it's all about being smooth here. Orient Express Racing doing a really nice job getting the boat around the, the mark there and getting an early tack in. They'll have a clean lane of breeze after they go through the dirty air bubble of Ineos Britannia there as they come downwind but Emirates Team New Zealand really with the foot on the floor as well it'll be really interesting next in about 30 to 40 seconds when both boats come back together it'll be really interesting to see how has Emirates Team New Zealand made a gain or a loss. Ineos Britannia sitting in position four round the bottom mark and they head upwind here come a Lingy Red Bull racing as well as you see it on your screen, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli in the number one position, followed by Emirates Team New Zealand and France make up that podium. Just getting fresh air now. We have gained a bit. If there is more breeze on the right, we have to do one in in right gate. Oh, real life. A bit on the slow. Some left here. But the guys are going right behind us. 
Yeah, I think quite a good game there um, to Luna Rossa, part of Pirelli, yeah. taking that left turn at the bottom, yeah. heading out to the right-hand boundary. They've actually extended their lead now, probably by about 150 metres uh, since going around that gate, so a huge gain to them out to that right-hand side of the course. Let's go on water with Peter Lester. Peter, I just want to quickly go back to that rounding by Luna Rossa, Parada Pirelli. How sweet. Yeah, it's a good rounding, but more importantly, uh, it was the right option because over on the right there was more wind. The New Zealanders went to the left and um, it, it got a bit softer. There was a big light spot and also they had to uh, keep out of the way of Alinghi who was coming down. So good option taken by uh, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli at that bottom mark gate. Yeah, the French making a huge gain by tacking early there underneath Emirates Team New Zealand, sailing around their bow into better pressure and actually tacking and crossing. So a big gain there from the French sailing their boat really, really cleanly. So we go back on board Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli because they are leading the fleet comfortably at this point in the race. Race number yes, three on day go, one. Up. Also 57, happy with 57 now. Happy on this angle. Yes, go 57, nice. Bow down. Trim down. Seems very collected on their boat, doesn't it? Very relaxed. You know, the trimmers are a little bit older as well, a little bit more experienced in these boats, just keeping keeping I everything think about on the an Yeah, talking yeah, through wind angle and guns. trim yeah. and pitch there, doing a really nice yeah. job yeah. with the Italians. Yeah. A twin helm of Ruggiero Tita and Marco Grodono doing the job at the moment. Oh, at the halfway yes, point of this third no, race. No, no, no. Yeah. Three races a day, eight fleet races in total. It is Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta. And around the mark, the Italians go. Foot to the floor on the downward leg now. Yeah, these next couple of jibes coming up on this downwind, absolutely crucial to get that boat down to the bottom in good shape. Next leg is very parallel. Looking at the French here, they've pulled off their tack nice. Emirates Team New Zealand going a little wider to clear their air to make sure that they're over target speed to get the tack in. All important to stay on the foils at the moment. Not super windy. It's going to be all about keeping the boat cleanly on the foils as they make their way down to the bottom end of the course. So, race three pops up some surprises in this stuff. fleet race. And now Orient Express racing. Rounding that left-hand mark at the uh, top of the course. Really. No, 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 no. And heading on that downward leg. Uh, in come Emirates Team New Zealand, the winner of the first two races. A lot of work to do, a lot of work to do if they were to manage to pull out a third race win here. But never say never when it comes to Mother Nature and the wind. As simple as that. They go round the mark in position three, Emirates Team New Zealand. Yeah, as we've seen previously, only one wobble in a manoeuvre. You can go from hero to zero in an absolute blink of an eye. So nothing's over until it's over in this type of racing, particularly on these sort of days with a little bit of dirt. Dirty air floating around. Um, everyone will be really concentrating absolutely all the way to the bottom end of the course. Okay, crossing us now. Shift, guys. Uh, it's mean at the moment. And Lingy Red Bull Racing now Two, running that right hand mark. Line. You'll see okay, we'll just coming a shot now. Ineos Britannia taking the opposing mark. So at the moment you have Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli and a fine performance by the Orient Express Racing Team and Thierry Duyar is their coach. Thierry joins us right now. Thierry, satisfied at this point? Uh, the goal is to finish the race by falling, so I don't want to speak too early, but things are coming together. The guys are, are pushing out since a few days. 
the two first race was a bit disappointed, but we things are coming together, so let's push it and uh, let's see how it's going on. Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli go around the mark. Yeah, Terry, I Glenn Ashby here. I'm a bit scared to talk to you because the last time I spoke to you mid jibe the boys fell off the foil, so I hope I don't give you the comment commentator's curse again, but the boys doing a fantastic job there and uh, really, really sailing the boat well. So you guys have obviously done a great job and, um, yeah, well done to the whole team. They're sailing well. Thanks, mate. It's, uh, yeah, it's a teamwork. It's uh, days and days on the water to try to be accurate in attack and a jibe and a, a straight line. So we still have a lot to do, but things are coming together, as I said. Thanks for your appreciation. The time is Orient Express Racing round the mark. Remember, and remember, if those of you joining us and watching this, Orient Express Racing, the last team, the last team to get their AC40. So they're playing catch up. And they only have one boat, Stephen, and the boat had to come on a ship. So they haven't had a lot of prep time and they had issues with the boat this week. So it, it feels like they've found a bit of form now and a good result in this race. We really do, do wonders. So two teams have rounded the bottom markers. Emirates Team New Zealand are in trouble. Peter, what's happened? Well, Team New Zealand came over towards, I'm um, looking up the course on the left, and they touched down. Bit of a light spot. They came out of the jive, a little bit of a wobble, and down they went. So Team New Zealand, that's their first mistake of the day, really. But it's soft over on this left-hand side, looking up the course. Ineos Britannia also very close to touching down. It's getting a bit funky here later in the day, but uh, wow. That's a big moment for Emirates Team New Zealand. And then I look back up the course and Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, just sailing beautifully. And it just shows you how powerful winning the start is. Let's just show you what happened to Emirates Team New Zealand. Yeah, just going through the jibe here. Oh, just coming out of the jibe. A little slow, not enough speed and water flow over the foil to keep the boat foiling and down they go. So very, very disappointing for Emirates Team New Zealand there, but that's sailing. It happens in these conditions and unfortunate. The French coming in here as well, getting the board up, oh, just washing a little bit of speed off as well. You can hear the frustration on board the French yacht as they're trying to dig the boat out of the hole. And my French is not as good as my daughter's, but I had a fair idea of what they were saying there. Yes, but you did say, I don't want to talk to you, uh, Thierry, just in case something happens. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so, drama in race three. Emirates Team New Zealand, one of the first two races off their falls. Orient Express in a little bit of trouble, but still sitting in the second position. And here come the Britannia. You can see the work that the trimmers are doing there on the sails, the depth that they're really putting into these little efficient rigs really bending the air as much as they can to get absolutely every bit of power they can they're really struggling way to get down the way past ley line yeah they're doing everything they can to stay on the foils here even disregarding going through the gate just to keep the boat on the foils it's all about keeping the boat on the foil my wheel rescue here two one Pump it up. Yep. Here we go. Yep. They've actually okay. tacked around instead of jibe, yep. which is a bit of a yeah, technique yeah, you do yeah, in light yeah. air, so what you don't do have to can. sail back through your That's own dirty down, air. So you're actually yep. keeping the air clear. They'll actually build speed. They'll bear away, and they'll so actually take the here. left yeah. turn here. Alinghi have managed to stay up, but Ben be and the Giles yeah. and the boys, their only option maybe was to tack around. This is make or break for any Ospitania here. So it's Alinghi Rebel race to go around the mark, the bottom mark in third position and touchdown. Oh my, here we go again. Over just behind them you can see any Ospitania. Just squeezing themselves out. Oh, just coming off the foil there, Alinghi Red Bull Racing. Ineos Britannia doing everything they can. 
Meanwhile, we go to the top of the course, and guess who's cruising along nicely? Luno Rosa, Prada Pirelli. This is the umpire. France, penalty, penalty, France. Boundary penalty. Ouch! Oh. P2, ouch! Really, really difficult the there for the guys behind. But Luna Rossa, Prada, Pirelli, they will be doing everything they can to stay on the foils here, Minus getting two. the boat down to the finish. I will not go lower than 29 knots from this boat. It is under yeah, seven yeah. knots yeah. of wind. And we are seeing Luna Rossa do 30. Yeah. Just yeah. take yeah. a moment, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. to yeah. think yeah. about that. That yeah. is yeah. extraordinary. This could be one of those days these young helms go, how far is that? We'll just uh, mark that penalties. down on the uh, memory uh, bank penalties. and say, You have about that's... 150 metres to lose. All the way to the boundary. That's how much fun it is to sail fast and a, and a yacht and, and win a race. Yeah, well, they're certainly not at the finish line yet, Stephen. <laughs> I've seen this movie before. I've been on a boat once before that came off its wheels in this exact same situation. <laughs> It's not over <laughs> until it's over, and th these guys on board will be penalty very, complete. very well aware of that. Penalty complete. As soon as, as I open my mouth, coming up. as soon as I open my mouth, I went, yeah, hang on, back the truck up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, as you can see at the top. Okay, we're going to have one more job to do, probably. Only keep us Sounding incredibly confident on their comms. Yeah, the comms are really, really impressive on board Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, bringing the boat home if they can, doing everything they possibly can to keep the boat sailing accurately, not risking too much, not sailing the boat too high on the foils, all about just sailing cleanly from here and getting through this next manoeuvre. Imagine, you're Marco Gradone. This Angle, potentially, up, if they win this race, it's his first win in the America's Cup the arena. Yes, what a moment for this young man. It'll be one that he'll remember for the rest of his life if they can pull this off. So no pressure on the next manoeuvre whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps throwing F out there, F out there. How about just going, yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> I've seen it on both occasions where you make it and you don't, so I hope for their sake that they can make it across in good shape. I mean, just a little mention about his co helm. Ruggiero Tito is the man in the Olympic foiling world. The World Sailor of the Year last year is a, a phenomenal talent. And if you're an Italian America's Cup fan, things are looking good. Here come Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli in a race number three of the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta, and they have the finish line in sight. No Jimmy Spittle, no Francesco Bruni. Gradoni, Tita, helming Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli into a race win. I did pause when I said race win because they've still got a little bit of way to go. But they have looked strong. It was the start. The start made all the difference for Luna Rosa. Easy on, coming down and jiving. Coming down. Three, two, one, four down. Philippe Presti, their coach, will be holding his breath on this final jibe. And we're coming up. Ah, uh, uh, they're okay, they're okay. Uh, here we are okay. Luna Rosso, Prada Pirelli. Everybody held their breath, but there you have it. Win number one in Jennifer Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli. That deserves the bravo, bravo. Yeah, there you go, the bravi, bravi. No, complimenti. Well done. win for Luna Rosa. Oh. possiamo dropare. Drop down. It deserves a wow as well, doesn't it, at this level of racing? So, full 10 points for Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, and it will, could turn out to be a, a valuable, valuable 10 points as we, and Lingy Red Bull Racing, Enios Britannia, rounding the top mark. Yeah, really close cross there yep. between those two boats. There, um, possibly even a protest that we'll hear from Richard. Okay. Shift is mean. Good for 57 effective. Keep on his toes. Yeah. How's pressure? Watch uh, shift's mean, so let's set up can't jitter. Oh, I think we could have done it. 
better trim that and slow that up. Don't worry, going right now, that's not a penalty. That's ridiculous. Any good pressure here now? Okay. You can roll away if you want it. Let's okay. go here. Go, board down. No lower. Up a couple of They need to power that mainsail up just a little bit more, in my view, coming out of that jibe. Nearly a big stall there for Ineos Britannia. Let's go on board, Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, Marco Gradoni. Congratulations, stunning win. Well played. Yeah, I think it was a difficult race. It was really light, but I think we all managed to do good foiling, the light breeze, and I'm happy. I'm happy because we did uh, a good race and we are able to do it. So let's keep like this. It's only the beginning. Marco, it's uh, Glenn Ashby here. Uh, complimenti to you and the, uh, the rest of the sailing team and the full team. How does it feel to uh, win your first America's Cup race, mate, on, a, on an AC40? Yeah, thank you for my congratulations, but it's for all the team. And uh, I mean, it's nice. It was really light. It was difficult, but you were able to suffer till the end. So I'm happy with the team. We have to rest and we have to do better the next days. Marco, it's Shirley here. Just very quickly, just give us an indication of how stressful it is sailing out there, knowing that at any moment or if there's one bad maneuver, then the boat is in the water. How hard is that? Yeah, it's pretty stressful because you're sailing around the course and there is all the the gas of all the boat so i mean it's it's really stressful but uh, we know how to do it we have to keep doing it like that and till the end we have to do our best marco congratulations to you and all the team uh, go and enjoy this one we'll see you on the water tomorrow thank you Lingy Red Bull Racing are coming in. They're sitting in P3 and they should complete the podium, so to speak, here for the final race in Jeddah. Here they come through. It's been a good day. It's been a good day for Lingy Red Bull Racing. They started with a fourth. They went on, got a second, and they'll complete it with a third. So it's a valuable five points for the Swiss on day number one. And in come Ineos Britannia. And uh, as Shelley said earlier, they are the big improvers and they have proved to be the big improvers if we look back at Villanova and look now at Jetta. So a good day all round for the two teams that have just crossed the line in third and fourth. Yeah, sorry about that. They were kind of bow forward and they would have had a so they touch down their race is done for the swiss and emirates team new zealand well it's just what happens and, and what we have seen if you get one little maneuver wrong it can cost you the race and it's as simple as that as we've seen in these ac40s They will still be in a strong position, though, because they picked up two wins and 20 points. This is the race committee. The time limit has been reached, and race three has been stopped. Race three has been stopped, and that's a day called as we quickly take a look at the standings. Emirates Team New Zealand picking up the 22 points, followed by Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli on the back of that stunning first ever win for the Helms. Lingi Red Bull Racing, Ineos Britannia, Orient Express Racing, not a great day for New York City's American, New York Yacht Clubs, excuse me, American Magic. Ouch, how about that? But never say never when there's still two days of racing to go and a lot of fleet racing to play. It has been a cracking opening day. The weather conditions may have been marginal, but all the teams, all of the teams managed to get something going on. Some didn't. The Swiss, the Italians in Great Britain will look at this one as a great day. These men on Emirates Team New Zealand will say it has been a fantastic day and we'll review what happened in that third race. But as you've seen, we are good to go and racing in the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta.
Day number two of racing on the Red Sea is tomorrow, and we look forward to your company then.